I'll take up and then there's another 50 pound. Mm. And that's, that's what you need. But if you wanted, you could probably do that for fun. Yeah. It's, it's straightforward enough to do, like. Um, okay, John, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you. Thanks very much. Um, what uh, what has you been doing here at the moment? I uh, just came up there to, to visit the, the girlfriend, so I came up there, so I, when they said that she wanted to do it, I said I'd like, give you a bit of time, I suppose. Uh, it, uh, it worked out well for us, I think. Um, were you up too much in Dublin, or do you just sort of chill out? No, just last night, just went, went for a bit of food, went to the cinema, that was it then. Uh, went for a few pints, actually, in, in, uh, in Dublin there as well, so that was about it, like, not too exciting, I had to go up here this morning to do a bit of work, so. Do you, uh, do you ever get recognised much in the beer, right? Or? Not in Dublin, no. Well, it all depends. If you went to Camden Street or into the Rhines or anything like that, you get recognised fairly easy, all right. But yeah. not, not where we were last night, not just fairly quiet. It wasn't exactly a whole of a yeah. part of Dublin. Is that not a bit mad? Isn't that what people recognise you? Is it a bit weird or is it kind of just in there? Uh, no, it, 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 all depends, it all depends on where you are, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you get recognised, it's usually in a kind of a strong, a hurl and strong board. Then you, you could get one or two people that come in and, and, and recognise it, and that's about it. Actually, having food last night, I went to sit down with some fella, and he goes, Oh, well, how are you? I was like, Oh, not too bad. I have no clue who you are, and so this kind of thing. But, but uh, no, it was fine, like, you know, it's not too bad. I suppose it's not a bad complaint, have you? That's a weird thing, yeah. Um, you any hurt at the minute then? Is that all finished up, um, or is, is any club going on? No, I um, finished up there, finished up last weekend there. We were in relega- senior relegation, so we got relegated from senior A to senior B. Right. So, not a, not a great year for the club, but you know, we just, we're still in senior, but senior B, so it will take a lot more to try and win a, a championship. But we had a bad year, we didn't, we didn't win any championship match this year for the first time ever, so right. it, was a, it was a pretty <laughs> pretty bad year. Right? I wish you would have brought that up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, and to make it worse, I was captain as well. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, very competitive, I'm guessing, uh, your championship, was it? Yeah, um, totally competitive. We were in a very tough group, like we had Torres Arsons in our group, and Kilroy McDonough's as well. First game, Kilroy McDonough's beat, beat us by a point, and they, were, they, were, they won the quarter final yesterday, but they were points that, you know, so. But, like, we'd, we'd, have a, we'd have a good enough team to compete, but we, this year just didn't go, didn't go great for us, so. Let's try and, try and regroup for next year, I suppose. Happens like, doesn't it? Oh, it does, yeah. Like, <clears throat> in the relegation match last weekend, like, we've 900 drones playing for us, so. Uh-huh. We're, a very, we're a very young team, but, um, so it, 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 it would have come, you know, and then a couple of us struggling with a few injuries there, Joe, who was on the tape panel as well, he was struggling since, since the middle of the year. Like, yeah. so not having everyone fit doesn't help either. No, it doesn't. Are you only hurling your club or are you just dual? Or? No, we're dual, yeah. Um, senior Play football, football, senior football as well, yeah. So, was three three years ago, I think we got to the county senior football final and Camel Commercials beat us by a couple of pints. Um, but yeah, dual club. Probably have a better chance of winning the county football final than we, than we do hurling, but really? we don't we don't train for football. We only we only play it. We don't right, train, just, so just matches, it? yeah, exactly. So like if we have a, a football match, say on a Sunday, we might do twenty minutes at the end of the hurling section on a Friday. That's what it. And it's pretty much everyone that plays hurling. They play football as well. Yeah, the exact same team. Yeah, everyone. Um, but hurling is a priority, basically. Hurling is a priority. Yeah, but the football is more enjoyable because we don't take it as serious. Right. So it's a lot more enjoyable, and we kind of get more better results like because we're taking hurling so serious. Your, your football is kind of just go out and enjoy it, and that's the reason why you even get to divisional finals and then county finals in the last couple of years. And would that be kind of the way most of the teams at Tipperary would operate? Or? Well, the, that's, that's the way most dual clubs would operate, or like just a lot more, for example, they'd, they'd kind of be similar enough. They'd, they'd, they'd be more, they'd basically, basically concentrating on hurling, but they don't take the football very seriously there and count the semi final for football now as well. Like, yeah. They, uh, I reckon myself they didn't want to win it, but you know, it's, that's the way dual teams are. Then you have to you have just football clubs and concentrate solely on football as well. Yeah, you see it at the club level. Do you find much of a difference between you know? Do you find playing football a lot harder physically, or certain a lot harder, or is it all much the same? Um, I don't really know. Like because the football is kind of you go out to enjoy it, and the way we look at it is we kind of use we kind of look at it as a training session, kind of. A, yes. Go out and use it as a as a fitness builder or whichever. So even when you're when you're in a tip and you have a couple of football games, that's what the manager would say to you, like to go out, play it, try and win the game, enjoy use it as a use it as a training session. Yeah. So in that sense it's it's really enjoyable. I think so I think that's a problem really with, with football and probably hurting now is that the majority of people don't enjoy it because of this so seriously. That's the thing, yeah, well 
it, it's gone. It's gone so serious. That's the, that's the way we just, we just approach football. We kind of go out with that. If we win, great. If we lose, so it doesn't really matter right. because we don't exactly take we don't exactly take it too serious. But you know, if we got to the final a couple of years ago, we could have won it. But at the same time, we didn't exactly put in too much preparation. Yeah, uh, so you're not all that bored, and it doesn't work. Well, like any time you lose a final, it's not great. But you know, um, we we concentrate on hurling, like, and, and if we if we do well in the football, like, it's, it's just sure. a moment. Yeah. That's a good way of doing it. Like we didn't over and follow in um, in our club, like right. Um, we obviously know there's very very little in the area too, but yeah. um, from the from the clubs, <coughs> yeah, you know, select news and stuff. I um, actually have um. Do you, know, do, you, do, you know, do you know John Johnny Dwyer? Do I? Yeah. yeah. I was actually chatting to a boy from Fort Glen today. Um, and I was telling him he was coming up to do the podcast and they were saying you were his, you were his cousin. I'm only working this out now. I've only figured this out recently, but his nickname is Tip. Right. And I'm guessing it's like he, his family must be. His family is from Tip. Yeah, Johnny. Uh, Johnny or Aldo. Uh, uh, yeah. So Johnny, Johnny's father lived four door, four doors away from me, uh-huh. and. He, he's originally a tip man, but he moved up to Derry when he was young and he heard for Derry. Right. And John Derry must be six or seven years ago now. I think Johnny came down when he was around 17 or 18. He came down for the summer uh-huh. and uh, he'd done a bit of training with us. And we were there, he was a serious hurler. Uh-huh. So we were there, we were trying to convince him to move down and transfer down <laughs> like the whole lot. But um, he was having none of that time because he was on the Derry panel. But I think he's, he's, living, he's living in Germany now, is he? I can tell you where he's at now. Um, I know that for them, the team that, that he plays for, they beat us in the championship. They're actually in the championship final now. Right. So I would, I would say he'd probably be coming back. If not, yeah. if he's not in the panel, do they watch him now? But or maybe um, he just goes over and back then, I don't know. But it could be, I feel like um, he was there in the game we played. But, um, I, actually, I was actually up there two years ago. I was up to do a camp up in um, Boston in the big GA Center. There. One big? Um, yeah. Yeah, I went up there. I went up to do a camp up there a couple of years ago, and I uh, went out with Derry for a night. There was out with Johnny, so I heard that's good. Cool. Don't crack, yeah. <laughs> Very good. We went. Um, we got a bit of drive around, drive around the city and stuff like that, and then just went out for a few times and yeah. crack. So, uh, just a couple of bars and areas are um, they're, they're good out crack. Like. Yeah, like the club, the club that we're doing it for actually was um, is rival is big rivals with Johnny's club. Like. Um, or something, was it? Yeah, we went to, we went in to do a presentation in the club, and yeah. Johnny wouldn't come in because. Like no way that he went to have that, that, that club's uh, clubhouse to do. Like, it was like a few pints to do a presentation. Like so, he he, he waited at home until we were finished, and then he came in and then after. <laughs> uh, it's some of the season the, the like, brilliant clubs in the area. They are they are very competitive. And not that there is only a handful, but um, I think you watch them and hear like the standard is pretty good. Like, um, but the standard is good, yeah. Like even when we're up doing the camp, I just feel like on the way up we done on the way up we done a. Uh, Camp for a Camogie camp, but well not a camp, just yeah. they found out that I was going up to Derry, so they asked me to stop in for an hour to do a Camogie session. And so I stopped in, and, but the standard is uh, it's high left. Yeah, so. I think it's just the fact that there is so few people playing up there, that's, what's, that's what kills it. Yeah. You know, like half the clubs that you want to play it. And then we stop me to keep running, then like, it's, it doesn't exactly help me. No, it does not look, it does not. Um, uh, they, they won the game, actually. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit hard to take a monster to again. Um, it's been a couple of months now since uh, All Ireland. Have you been able to process it? Or have you? Uh, I suppose you have. Like, you know, we've kind of since it's finished up. Like, you get to you get to go back and kind of enjoy your social life. Whereas, like, when you're when you're playing, like, you kind of have to put on hold. So, anywhere you go, it's kind of like even last night, like, I went into the local pub where where I was. And, uh, Martin Donnelly there for Clare. Like, he's sponsored Clare to the years ago. Like, I know him fairly well. Just there, he's in. I wouldn't have seen them since this time last year, like, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been out, like, all oh, level as they were in, like, all, oh, they're not water, don't buy any pints yeah. or whatever, like, you know, so it's a bit of crack, like, you know, things like that is good, like, but then, the minute you finish, like, we finished on the Sunday, and I had a club match on the Friday, like, yeah. you know, went out, played a football game, we scored two, three, and I scored one, three, so, like, it is, the minute, the minute you come down after, after, after adrenaline rush, like, you're straight back into club action, like, so it's a bit of a, uh, it you get no break, like, you know? Yeah, and, um, I asked Mark McGee this year, what's it like? What is it like on Mall Island? Like, how does it feel? You've got two now, haven't you? I have two now, yeah. Um, it's kind of, it was kind of, this year was kind of weird for me because straight after the match, I was calling into the media duty, where I didn't sit in front of 200 journalists or whatever, they all sitting with their phones in front of you and stuff like this. And I got that done, and then when Lean came in, I was finished, so I left. And I was supposed to do another interview, and I was just about to start. 
and I'll look up here and say, first it was all the boys going absolutely crazy, man. Uh-huh. But I just turn around and say, that's I'm going, sorry, Walter, and just yeah. shout, call me, hey, John, John, come back, please come back. No, I'm going in, enjoying this with my team, and yeah. standing out here doing interviews for uh, for nothing, basically. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I, I just walked off with him and had to crack inside the wrestling. That's, it's the, the minute you win on the field, like, it's crazy. And then it kind of calms down, and then you do their lack of honour or whatever. But the best part of the whole lot is when you win some dressing, like, and everyone's just there yeah. waiting for waiting for Shane to come. Uh-huh. Everyone just there. Like, I don't think there's even one phone out to take a video of it, like, you know, because everyone was just. Just in the moment. In the moment. Like, yeah, from whereas usually, like, nowadays, like, it's kind of so yeah. social media, like, that you usually have people there waiting for the phone yeah. and trying to video it. There wasn't one person waiting for video, like, so there's actually no footage of it, like, so which yeah. kind of makes it even better, like, you know. And your brothers go mad, like? Everyone go mad, yeah, I remember. There's a little, there's a little last turf section in the co pad beside the dressing, like where you can do your warm up, whatever. We were inside there with a big, massive speaker, like, big, uh-huh. huge job. And uh, we were there, and the song was on there, we're on there, we picked it up and started throwing it up and down the air. <laughs> and just, so it was mad, like, and then it was all kind of calmed down, we were just kind of getting ready to win the shower and stuff. And then Liam came in, then the whole thing kicked off, then again, like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy, like, but then once it all calms down, then, like, you, straight away after you have your shower, you go across. In for a bit of finger food and stuff like that, and yeah. just when you need on the tennis balls or whatever that you want, just kind of interact with them and, and have and have a fight and a chat with a couple of players like you know. So that's kind of yeah. So you have to be respectful for that then as well. Uh, um, that being your second one, did it feel the same as on the first one, or was the first one a lot better? Or? Um, well, you see, the first one, see, I only started two games in the year because I got sent off in the first semi final against Limerick. Missed the Munster final, didn't start all in the semi final, didn't start the final, so kind of making, kind of getting yourself back onto the team, yeah. I suppose, was pretty special. But then this year, Lean coming back after not playing last year, a few injuries and just not making the team, like kind of, kind of very similar, similar in some ways, like so. But like I was, I was asked that a couple of weeks ago, well, like, well, which one was better? Like, I'd say, I'd say this one is kind of slightly better right. because after having such a bad year last year for personally and mm-hmm. and collectively like kind of come from where we are we're kind of you know, bottom of the barrel we yeah. wants to like to come and win the other and like it was it was, um, it was a fairly fairly big achievement makes that a little bit more special like exactly yeah like because last year was such a bad year for all different kinds of reasons like and then to come back to this year and kind of i know we lost the most of time between kind of six out of seven games yeah. you know like takes a lot of work like we kind of Targeted the Munster Championship really, really hard for the first round of the games to make sure that we got out of a Munster match. Also, to, to finish it off, then was, was, was good. Yeah. And you think the, the team of you know, last year, not having the best of years, did that bring us together a bit more, do you think? Or? Um, I, think what, I think what probably brought us together was the under 21s winning all Ireland last year. Uh-huh. Seeing, seeing them and kind of kind of knowing that a few of them would be added to the panel, and then with nine or ten of them being added to the panel, like that kind of brought. The energy did, that brought a bit of energy then for a couple of lads that had been there for years then to kind of you know kind of yeah. s- stock up like and say look if we don't if we don't put in effort here like these young lads are going to take our place or whatever like so that kind of it brought a competitiveness to the group like it brought an energy as well and just the crack that they brought as well like yeah. just, just do it like. I didn't need that after a while uh, I remember I think I was chatting with chatting with you one of the things that really happened that year in Gaul was the 21s came through, you know, or they had won or got the final, I think it was the year before, and that new blood came coming through the team. Yeah. That's a big difference to it. Like. Well, it does, yeah, like, it, it, gives, it gives it energy, but usually, kind of, when young players like that come in, like, they've been interested in the shy, like, they kind of mm-hmm. they stick together and sit in the corner or whatever, like, yeah. as you can see, they come in and they, they, they interact with the group straight away, like, and, you know, just a bit of, a bit of boldness that kind of brought, like, I remember there were, we had a training camp in Dublin and we went for a few points after. And uh, one of the lads now, I won't say any names, but um, you know, he just, some, one of the other lads said something smart, but he took off by and just started throwing, <laughs> hammering into him. Like, you know, so that, uh, and, like, that was good. Like, you know, usually, they were like, game? Uh, they were game, anyway? Like, yeah, that, uh, that's, that's the thing. Like, you know, he kind of he just hammered into him and was like, you know, I don't care if you're here five yeah. years or whatever. Like if you say something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slag you back. You know? So there was a slagging match back and forward there for, yeah. for a good five minutes, like so, which was good to see. Definitely, definitely. Um, I was watching that goal he scored in all Ireland final. Yeah, that I'm guessing that was a dream whenever you're away in to do something like that. What's it like, essentially living out a dream? Yeah, was that was like. I was actually the only thing I was quite, I was quite surprised because I didn't think Shane would pass it because he really doesn't. But 
and um, I definitely think he, didn't, he wasn't going to pass the pass. I remember in 2016, I first scored a goal, they got the chance straight after. And Shane was right across the square and going on him, and I never passed it. He, he, has, he, still hasn't, <laughs> he still hasn't stopped talking about it, but <clears throat> so that was the thing, Shane, he's just he's an unselfish player. Like, yeah. I don't know how I managed to get there with no one on me, but it happened anyway. Um, because we got the touch, the touch was fairly good. And, to do it to do in front of the hill and well, like it's really, it's really cool. Do you, whenever you're down you do that, do you hear like the noise and the madness or do you zone out and you kinda do you not hear it? No, you don't you don't hear it because you kinda you kinda you kinda celebrate but you but you don't celebrate because you're like I I just remember I scored it. I was like, oh yes, but oh, I have to go find my man yeah. now to get back into yeah. position like and Shane he was there, he was shouting at me, come on, let's go again, let's go again and stuff like this, like so you don't exactly hear the noise but but um, after it, I remember mean, after the second, Shane and Jake Morris were there, we got a free right at the end. The three was a fight now because he was going to take it. <laughs> they shouted, if the silent guy was going to take it, Shane said, not a whole mind taking that. Like, and whatever, and, um, and then put the ball over there and the whistle blew, like the three was just standing there literally two yards apart. Like, yeah. That's when you could hear everyone from the from, from the hill like, just go crazy. It must be a mad noise in the view right down in there, and you do kind of listen for it. Like. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. Like, Straight away, you kind of just want to go to your, to your teammates or whatever, but, and also, you know, commiserate with them, with the losing team, like, but, you know, when you go over into the sideline, like, and you see all their family and stuff like that, then, like, that's when, that's when it's, it's, it kind of brings it back down to earth or whatever. Ah, uh, but, um, that must be amazing, though, um, because being at, uh, is at the semi final this year, and you see them with the people, and I don't think you can properly understand what that must be like. Until you're down there, until you're in it, like. But oh, I see. Like I, the way I, the way I approach things, like it's just a approach of really relaxed. Like, like, like Stephen, Stephen Carl Barrett, kind of, are kind of cut to the same cloth. Where we kind of went to a match, and before the match, everyone's going and shouting, and getting geared up. Like and Stephen Carl, are kind of just there, kind of smiling, laughing at each other. Like you know, it's uh, like, only another game. Like, this kind of thing. Like so, that's why that's the way we like we don't exactly get ourselves like big up onto into a big occasion. Like it's kind of. Like, yeah. I'd actually get more nervous playing a club game than I would for yeah. a, a county game because, like, for a club game you're expected because you're on a county team, whatever you're yeah. kind of expected to do a lot. Like, whereas when you're on, when you're on a county team, there's you're playing with players of the same, yeah. the same, the same talent as you like. So there's not as much pressure. On. Do you find whenever you have that, you get more pressure? Whenever you feel a bit more pressure, do you think you play better? Or do you play worse? Or? Um, it kind of, it kind of works both ways. <laughs> This year now I I I had a bad enough year for the club, but usually I I'd be I'd be pretty good. And it was it was actually pointed out to me recently enough. I brought we were bringing around the cups around to the schools, like, and I brought it to me my one of my local schools. There's three schools in my club, and I brought it in and, I, and we're having a Q and A. And the teacher says anybody have a question, so a young guy pops up and he's here and he's like, that. "Bubbles, um, why do you always play so well for two grade, but you're useless for long? <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, I was like, "Who put you up to that?" And he's like, "No one." And I, I was like, um, oh, should my back is broken, carrying to the north for the last number of years, that's why all this stuff. Just having a bit of a joke out then. He came up to me then after me, he's like, oh, Tony Lyle told me to say that. Tony beyond the killing all team. Yeah. Like, I was just like, <laughs> but this year I had a fairly bad year for the club. Like, but, um, but, so when, you, usually you wouldn't suck into the pressure. Like, but this year, maybe I did, maybe captaincy or whatever for the club, like, kind of put a bit of pressure on me. So I, I don't exactly look at it like that either. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because like, I think that the different players and different people will, will use pressure and then other ones like you can't like, say just stay relaxed and well, oh, yeah, it's like the, to figure that out, doesn't the it? Higher, the, higher, the higher the stakes, for me usually the better I play kind of like, but, <coughs> but uh, just this year this year just didn't happen for the club, like obviously it went well for tip or whatever, but it's all, you're kind of, you're, you're not really allowed to a club, like, yeah. you know, especially getting relegated then like it ended up, yeah, being successful with tip, like it ended up overall being you know, you know, Bad year for, for me and for, for our club. I think like whenever it, when it isn't going good in the team, like the only thing that matters individually, you, you just you, when it's going when it's going bad, it's going bad. Like. Yes, yeah, so that's the thing. Like when you get when you get when you get stuck into a rut, like it's yeah. it's very hard to get out. Like we played teams this year that where usually we'd be considered maybe a better team than them, but this year we were just in a rut. Yeah. We, we, like we played we played it was five championship hurling games. We didn't win any. We played five, four, five championship football games. We, we only won one, like you know. So we just got into a rut, and that's it. Like. Yeah, 
and you'll be around that stuff together. It's kind, of, it's kind of the same as what we were last year with Tipman. Kind of going to be tired yeah. of where we couldn't win a game. And, you know, it kind of, there's no energy there, like, you know, when you're losing that, you know, so I think, it's tired. I think momentum's a big thing too, and choosing the momentum and we're going, we're going weak, it's quite hard to keep them over, it's quite hard to keep it up. If you get a win and you get another one, we're going to get momentum starts building. It's that's, a big difference. That's, un, that's underestimated, like, you know, yeah. like, when you start, you can see it there with, with say, Wexford this year, like, you know, they were winning, they were, they were drawing, they were drawing, and they were winning, they got their momentum. Like, when, once you have momentum, like, that's, it's a big energy boost. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with Tip, Liam Shady has obviously done a very good job with the past where it seems like there's been a lot of kind of, say, professionalism, a wee bit more maybe brought, or is it just a different different structure being put in place um, over the past couple of years? Or? Uh, there, was always, there was always professionalism there, like maybe the professionalism dropped from a player's point of view as well in the last couple of years, like yes. when we came back in, we kind of we kind of had sole focus on our on maybe two goals, it's like win the Munster Championship, then win the, win the Ireland Championship. Yeah. But um, it was kind of just it was do or die for a lot of players, like you know. So you know, myself included, we just kind of put our shoulders to lead. You know, the team, the, the backroom team that we got with him, like, was, was not got to do with like, even be the first to say that he's only, he's only a small club in the real life. It's a big backroom team, wasn't it? I think it was, it was made a lot bigger than, than, than what it actually was. Like, some of them people were just didn't carry water and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, but um, but uh, the, main, the, main, the main core, the main core of the group, like, was you know, the seven or eight people. Like, so yeah. they, were, they were all top class and really professional guys. Like, um. Kerr from Belfast doing your S and C. Kerr, yeah. Yeah. Kerr he seems to have done a really good job with that sort. So that's the thing, like Kerr, but like he's he came from a he came from Arsenal yeah. soccer club, like so. You know, you can see that he's really professional. The first time we met him, like his presentation and everything, like was, was pretty good, and, and he, see, he interacted well with the players, like and that's and that's why people bought, bought kind of bought into his to his methods. So, so he, he brought a lot to it, like and he was just heard of that. Yeah. Just absolutely hurling mad. Like his brother his brother heard French yeah. a couple of years ago. He actually marked our physio in a league match. I think it was back in two thousand two or three or something like that. But uh, but um he's hurling mad like <clears throat> anytime you anytime you go to a training session he's there, he'd have all his stuff set up about an hour before and he's like poking around with the field like yeah. just poking around with someone and just running around he's, he's like an energizer running like. Yeah. And so that was good, like whereas if you don't have someone that has a hurling background, like it might be a bit difficult for them. Like, you know, hard to find hard to find this player maybe too. Yeah, exactly. I just don't like he heard he heard before himself, like so he kind of knew. Yeah. And like obviously he's a certain condition and stuff like that, so he kind of knew what was needed for 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 his. Do you enjoy gym work or you can do? Oh it yeah, just like I used to. No, I I used to run I used to run a gym myself, so uh, and I and I and I done it in college as well. I studied strength and conditioning in college as well, so. Um, Really, really enjoy the gym yeah. work. It's just about, you know, you just have to make time for it. Like. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. Whenever you're in the kind of season with Tipple, does a uh, like training week look like? You know, how often are you getting into the gym? Well, from the start, from the start of the year, say in whichever January, until you finish your you're in the gym twice a week. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, from ja maybe January to March, early April, you could be in it three times a week. Yeah. But you're you're training collectively. Maybe five times, five times a week, not six. Yeah, so what does it do? Like maybe four, four pet sessions and two, two gym or something. It could like usually look like mon Monday you're in the gym, Tuesday you're on the pitch, Wednesday you're in the gym, Thursday you're off, Friday on the pitch, and then either Saturday or Sunday you're on the pitch club. Yeah. Um, how do you find managing that time? Like, it's obviously a lot of your, it's like a full time job. So that's the thing. Like I, like as I said, I used to run a gym, so I, I kind of get that up. Like as the hours I run the gym is. Yeah. It's pretty tough, like you know, six in the morning to maybe nine or ten at night, night, like so. I had to give it up and just get a, a nine to five job, like so. But once you get once you get a week planned out, like, you, sh you should find it fairly easy to do. It, like, but it is a full time job, like it's getting harder and harder because the amount of time that you that you have to put in, like the amount of time that say your manager or, or your players want to be together, like you know. Yeah. And would there be many players doing all their stuff? Or even yourself, like would the players still doing all their stuff themselves outside of that as well? Do you think? Or? Yeah, you would like, like <clears throat> especially you see, it's not like when you're winning. When you're winning, you see, kind of, you want to spend more time with each other. Mm -hmm. It's like just myself and Carl Barrett, they're very good friends. Like, and, so if we're if we're together, we tip five nights a week. And say myself and Carl are in the, are in the pitch or just going to the pool or something. The other yeah. two, like, do you know what I mean? So you're kind of spending time 
with the with the same group of people nearly all the time. Like, you know? And the kind of work you're doing in the gym, is it anything, like is it all the kind of basic gym work that you would think about it, or are you just doing anything crazy? Or? Um, no, it's like it's all it's all fairly simple, like you know, from whenever they go back in December or January, whatever, like you're doing your, you're doing your power phase, like you're doing your low reps, like a high weight or whatever, and it just changes then over time, like so there's, there's all different structures in it, like you know, and then just to break it up, but then you could do an on circuit section or something like that, yeah. like, you know, but it's all it's all fairly structured and all, like everything is all kind of laid out here, you're told, there's your program, you go do your program, get that done, go home, like, you know, there's no time restriction or whatever, but just have to be, we just decided this year that we're going to collectively, like, you know, uh, so we had a group in. You need a bit more energy in the gym yeah, than every day. And I got, we kind of had groups of 10 going together, like, whereas, you know, years gone by, you kind of would have done it yourself, like, so, when you're doing your own, you don't do it, you don't do it half as well, like, whereas if you're beside someone, like, he lifts one weight, like, you want to lift, you want to lift more than him, like, you know. Like, I have to train by myself now, in the middle of the day, after, like, work in the morning, and it's, like, training is just, it's a real chore, but, yeah. to see whenever I train once in the evening, and it's, I do group sessions, and, I'm like, jealous is, like, this. Yeah. There's so much energy in the room, whereas like when I'm training, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. It was the same thing, like when I was training people before as well, like it's, and we're training in groups of trees and fours and stuff, like you want to get a crack and you know, yeah. pushing yourself, whatever, but then lunchtime, you know, then when you feel yourself, like it's just, it's just, it's just tough going, right? still here. Like, uh, it's a real chore. <laughs> um, I, I think an important thing too is, and I get a lot, you know, people want to know, you know what stuff is done, and there's really no like, magic secrets or no magic program, it's just the basic stuff done consistently like isn't That's it? That's it, yeah, like Carver would have set out our gym program like and if you look at any other intercounty teams like all their gym programs are probably mm -hmm. similar like yeah. there might be one or two different exercises in the play, but it's all mostly the same like, you know, so yeah. it's just about how, 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 how hard you push yourself and how consistent heavy, you heavy you want to lift or how, yeah. how fast you want to move or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Like I think some people think that there's a you know magic program or or something something that the top teams are doing, but all the information's out there. Like it's. Well, see, it's all there, but like kind of you kind of look at some you kind of look at some players then like they be absolutely busting out of jersey. Aye. That's only because they spend maybe for yeah. 20, 10, 15 minutes at the end just doing bunch show yeah. like you know. So that's that that's how they that's how they get get to look like that. Because most teams like it's all individualized, but it's mostly all the same. Yeah, I think it's kind of important too, especially gym work. Like, and sometimes you have a tendency to do too much and but that kind of two times a week that seems like a kind of good number with the amount of other work you, you have. See, see that's the thing yeah like, but if you're not on the pitch then like, you, could, you could be doing up to four sessions in the gym like you know yeah. so it all depends on how many how many um how many pitch sessions that you're doing if you're not able to be on the pitch like so when you're injured when you're injured you're going to be in the, you're going to be in the gym four times a week you're doing rehab and you'll be doing a gym program like, you know so but once you know what you're doing and once it's laid out for you, it's, it's very easy to actually do it and get in hands. It's thinking out of the life, doesn't it? Did you find that after last year there was anything you needed to work on in the preseason in particular? Or? Um, not really, because this, pre this, this year was the first preseason that I got in maybe two or three years because I struggled with injuries and stuff like that. So the minute the minute we finished our club season last year, I got, I got an operation on my ankle. So. Mm -hmm. I was in a boot for eight. I was in a boot for eight weeks. I think I got the first of first of October, and then I was back then around middle of December. So I kind of got a full a full preseason under my belt. Whereas years previous, I was injured. I was in and out of stuff like or whatever. I wasn't able to do a full preseason. Whereas this year I got a full preseason preseason in. It. Got enough slagging for it too. But yeah. So that that's that's the only reason why why we were so fit because I think that collectively I think majority of the group are able to train most of the next time. Yeah, it makes it so much easier. I think it even, like, if you have a good group like that training for a year, the chance of there being injuries and stuff is just because everyone's training consistently. But you see, this year, this year we had maybe two or three six strike conditioning guys, like, and if you're injured, I remember for the first five, six weeks, I was only coming back to do a small bit of running and stuff like that. Usually, usually you'd have to do it on your own on the sideline, but you, you, know, you, had, you had an S&C guy right there, which is like, Push, to push you or pull you back or whichever like so which was a great help like I, I spent five weeks running up and down the sideline on my own barely jogging then getting up to 50 percent and then eventually getting able to back in the full train yeah i've seen that this year with there it was that in the, probably in the years gone by and you've probably seen it if you're injured you just sat and watched mm -hmm. whereas up there if there's someone that was injured like if it was there 
if there's a leg they're injured, they're up in the gym and you get a lot of strain from the gym if they're in the gym or they're doing the rehab and running, like, there's never really an excuse to, to sit and do nothing. So that's the thing, even, even this year now, even when we first came back and I was, I was still I was still on off food training and like you have you have your two or three gym sessions a week and then the mice sitting on the pitch then you're, you're sitting on a walk bike like, if you ask anybody that, that does a walk bike session, you'd rather be out the pitch getting flogged in the walk bike session because they're absolutely horrendous. Um, with the um, with your pre-season training, you obviously probably have to do a lot with nutrition. Do you just have nutritionists, or do you do it yourself, or do you, do you yeah, probably have a good age with it? I'm guessing got, at this um, stage. We got a we got a new uh, a new nutritionist this year and. Uh, Came in from Galway, and uh, he was top class. Like he was just when he first when he first came in, he laid down the law straight away. Like and, and the professionals that he brought in was absolutely yeah. second to none. Like he, his attention to detail. Like and, and the one thing that he kind of kind of laid on was if you need anything, just ring me. Yeah. You know, so no matter what you look for, like if you look for anything, uh, all you do is ring it and you have it the next day. Like, yeah, you know, the amount of the amount of creatine. Yeah. Protein, whatever you want, boxes and stuff. Like, uh -huh. was there for like, and just, just lay it on to like John was, and he was top class. Like he knew his stuff. Like he knew why he came in. Just small little tweaks and a few things like that, uh -huh. and you are gaining ten percent. Like you know, yeah. Um, was the majority of the work he was doing was that you know on an individual basis for you, or was it maybe in, like pretty much meetings and stuff, or was it about everything? All, all individual. So he met. He would have met every player. Whatever the player, whatever you want, he he provides you, and it's just it's just you going off and doing it. Yeah, and, and that's basically it. Like the nutrition is only is only there to help you, but he can't actually do it for you. Like, so you have to go in and do it yourself. Same with gym work as well. Like you can get the best program in the world, but if you don't do it, it's exactly yeah. Like, like he he can't eat the food for you. Like yeah. Now he tried he tried to cook to cook it for us a couple of times. All right, like we've uh -huh. done a couple, couple of cooking nights and, and stuff like that when we had training camps, just for a bit of crack, like. But <coughs> Some lads, some lads didn't like some of the food that he's cooking, so he's kind of just leaving it himself. A few playing eaters, I would say. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have like a, what's your kind of uh, schedule or, you know, leading up to a game with him? Do you, because I know certain <coughs> players would be different, like would be three hours out, an hour out, or? Before, yeah, um, so like if you're, if you're playing on Sunday, say, two o'clock, you kind of get up at, you get up at maybe half seven, mm -hmm. have your breakfast, and then eleven o'clock then you have your main meal yeah. three hour three hours before and then maybe just when you arrive into the dressing room then just have maybe a banana or a yeah. nature bar or nature valley bar or whatever. And, and that's that's basically it. Like there's no yeah. real formula to it, like kind of the way the way the nutrition is laid out to us is kind of you eat, you eat on the Saturday like and then on the Sunday then you kind of just hop up like, yeah. that's it. Alex, you're doing your kind of carb load the day before basically? Yeah, that's it, yeah. What sort of meals would you be having the day of the game and then that breakfast lunch? Is it the same well, or did it change day, up? Uh, well, the day of the game you'd have, like for breakfast say you'd have you know, three eggs made with a bowl of porridge. Yeah. You know, and leave it at that like and then for, for dinner then before. So, it depends on the time to match, but like, still get around the eggs or something like that. You know, yeah. Just a bit of meat, a few carrots. And, the main kind of uh, the main work is on the day before, basically. Well, it's kind of done in the lead up to it. Like, you know, we're kind of building yeah. from say, well, like if you have a match on the Sunday, like we're kind of on recovery food on the Monday, and then from Tuesday on, then we're kind of, we're kind of getting ourselves prepared like, for the match week after. Yeah, and are you like tracking calories, or are you putting in? You know, are you getting the meal plans empty, or what way does it work? So you, you have you have you have your meal plan there, like you know, and. It's, the, it's all laid out for you, like you know, the amount of calories you're allowed, yeah. the amount of foods that you eat, or whatever. Like, so you just have to track that, like, and that's it. Like, there's no, don't exactly weigh our food or anything like that. Like, you know, that's kind of to the yeah. individual preference. That you know, it's kind of it, when you're doing it for so long, you kind of, you kind of know anyway. Like, you, know. uh, you get a good sense of it. And um, again, I think it's the same with the gym work we're chatting about. It, there's not. Really, any secrets again with it? You know, no, no, no secrets. Good fit. Like, you eat in relation yeah. to the work you're doing, and it's pretty straightforward. Like, yeah, and, it pay, and it pays off then. Yeah. And then go on, go on doing it with people. With people, then like I, I remember there one gym session we had there this year. There was four of us in a group, 
and we were there, so we're on, we're on we're just doing benching, like, uh -huh. just benching alone, like, we're not doing that moving. It's just like us, we start off at 16, and we go to 17, like, in five sets, and then we're building up long. One of us was trying to hold back, and the other lad did, one of us then was trying to, was trying to lift, 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 like, you know, to see who, see, uh -huh. see could, he, could we all keep going together, like, and, you know, one lad is obviously stronger than the other, like, so. Uh -huh. So that's the competitive edge, like it's a bit of crack in the gym as well, like you know, if some if some that lives more than you or whatever on the bench, it's just like a bit of slagging going on. Uh, so. It's good having that energy in the gym too. Yeah, yeah it's like the gym sessions are work with crack, like and that's that's the main thing, like because when you go into the tuesday night or whatever on the pitch sessions, they're they're hard work. Yeah. Like, you know, so. yeah. Is there any any big lifters in the tip team? Um, there is, yeah. Um, I'd say Dan McCormick is probably the biggest bench. We've seen McCall Mar we call Marins, McCall Mar he's fairly massive now, but um, yeah, Dan is probably, Dan or Bonner would probably lift the most, Bonner would probably beat Dan, but um, just Dan, all Dan concentrates on his arms, yeah. arms and chest, like so, but um, Carl Barrett would lift heavy as well, um, there wouldn't be too many light lifters, like, you know, I'd, like, I'd lift heavy enough myself, but it all depends, like, some, like, some like, go in there and, Lift, lift 100 kg in a bench, but then not able to do five pull ups. Yeah. So, like, I remember we done, we done a pull up test and we were all doing with some lads were getting 10 or whatever, and then another lad got 21, and she was only doing half, she was only doing half, and, so, <laughs> and he, was, he wasn't being watched by the yeah. SNC guys, so he got away with it, so he was top of the list. And I think he's been challenged by a few lads that he's he cheap. No, at all. No, no credit, that's <laughs> not. And if you beat you in the bench, it'd be half rep as well. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's classic. Having that energy in the gym is is really good. Like, cause I think, and you probably see it. Whenever you don't have it, it's so hard mm -hmm. to motivate yourself to train. It's great whenever you do have it. Like you have, you have. We're doing we're doing our testing there. We're doing our pull up test. Like, you're in groups of four or five. Like, mm -hmm. and if you're first up, like you, it's kind of it's a bit harsh because you're up. You're first up. Okay. Like, but I, I remember one of the tests we did. One first up was one of the one twenty ones that came up from last year. I think he banged out nineteen, and it's just like. How we want to follow that? Like, you know, there was a couple of old, there was a couple of old lads in the group. Then, like, we were just there trying, trying to follow that, and trying to get some way close to like. But yeah. I don't, I don't think anyone did that. Uh, that's uh, that's a serious amount of pull-ups. I have like uh, the record board in, in our gym, and the like, biggest bench, deadlift, and chin-ups, and all yeah. that. To see for the first like week that I had up, the crack in the gym was on because everybody was just trying to beat each other. But not just beat each other, beat each other by like the minimal amount. That's all, yeah. Just for pure hate ones, yeah. like, but it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I remember, like, seven, seven, seven Barrett would be, um, would be fairly competitive. Uh, we weren't in the same group, but we'd be kind of looking out, like, to see what that person gets, like. So I think he, he went up and he got, I think he got 17, and I was up after him then. And I, uh, and I got 16 then, and, and it killed me, like, <laughs> absolutely killed me. That he was after beating by one, like, yeah. But, uh, but well, that's the competitive side, it's a bit of crack, like, you know. Definitely, yeah, it's brilliant, like, it's brilliant. Um, going into next year, is there any kind of like, goals or anything you have? Um, or have you thought much about that yet at this stage? Not really, no, because we're only literally finished with the club stuff there now, and um, I'm actually heading off on holidays next week, so right. That's um, that's all that now, like, when, I, when I come back, I suppose I'll probably be straight back into my own holidays for six weeks, so. What about you for? Uh, one Australia. Nice. So I'm going over there for six weeks. So that'll be that'll be a bit of crack, and um, come back then and it's kind of just back to square one. Like it's yeah. just back in, straight in, testing none, and, and really go go up and down that field again. Are you traveling Australia or do you? Have yeah, going to um, going to Melbourne, Sydney, and Port. So we are going to do maybe ten, twelve days in each, and, and then. I was I was stag I was stag the weekend before before I won the stag the weekend I come back so right. it'll, be a, it'll be a tough couple of weeks but it's the time to do it like you know so yeah it has when you come back like it's got it's all back down to our well, it's like that it's like I'm sure as well like because the factories are so like intense and if you're in you really do need a break yes yeah, so that's the thing like a good break like that yeah. like when you when you finish with the county team like when you go back into your club action like yeah granted you can have your few points there when you're playing club action like, but you still can't exactly relax and kind of let your hair down like you know so I think the, the four weeks or five weeks in, in Australia will be a bit of crack like and all so you get to see, see a, lot of, a lot of cool places. Have you been there before? Or? No I've never been there before no. Um, been to a few places already but I've never been to Australia so yeah. I have a good few relations and friends over there so did, good, um, good did you ever play in any of the hurling games that were in New York? 
Boston. Or Boston. Boston, yeah. Did you yeah, I was there? there. I was there two years ago. Um, in Fenway, yeah. What was that like? It's good. Yeah, it was good crack. Good crack. Like it's a different format, but it was um, it's a bit of crack. Like it's kind of we went over and like you know, like we're not allowed to drink. Like it's supposed to be a bit of crack and stuff. We're not allowed to drink and laugh at the matches. Like, right. You know, so that's kind of but we are we. We, we play clear uh-huh. and they bet us by a pint, I think. But, um, yeah, it's, it's good crack. Like it's, we're going to New York with it this year. I'm not going now, I'm going to miss it. But I think the four semi finalists are going to New York to play it. The 11s this, this year, yeah, but I'm going to miss it. I'll be in Australia. So. I'm not really too bad about it. But. Uh, well, I suppose if you're done there, I like it's not too bad, is it? Yeah, sure. Look, it's just another game. It's, but it's in a, it's in a different, it's in a different um, city, like but. I'd say the Sean Americans watching that not have a notion what's going on there. Not have a notion, but they'd, they'd, they'd be like, oh my god, he's ever hitting him with his stick. <laughs> All this sort of stuff. Like, it's normal. But they, they take to the game, like, you can see it. Uh, like, it's, they kind of call it, like, it's kind of baseball, lacrosse, yeah. hockey, all kind of mixed yeah. into one and all this sort of stuff. Like, so, but, um, I just suppose that's what Sky Sports is after doing for to be like, so it's getting a lot of, yeah. a lot of foreign countries, say, uh, kind of getting enthralled in it. Like. Definitely, like, in, in any Anybody, or like whenever you look on Twitter, like the reactions to it and stuff, like everyone's yeah. amazed by it. Like even your man Josh Prey. Uh, is that your? Who did that? The, the fella Josh Prey there, the fella from from America that was uh, watching the game. Oh, the crew parking all. Yeah, <laughs> he was cracked. Like he, he was mad. Like yeah, I remember. I, I think I remember after Dollar and Final. I think I wrote him on Instagram and everything. Said, so, oh, fair play to Josh for giving the game some exposure uh, in America and all this sort of crack. Like, so, like he was never going to look at it. We reply or anything like that. So. He got um, he got some interviews and stuff for us. He did, yeah. Then he got a lot of abuse over too. Then, like, like did you? Well, the GA like saying that, or the GA bring this fella from America over because he put a few posts up on Instagram or whatever Facebook, like, and he and then a normal Joe so from Kerry didn't can't get a can't get a ticket to to match like all this stuff. Sort of People are just stupid too. Like, they just, they just find anything to go about. It's mad that people will just look for things, look for negative. Yeah, but well, sure. He was he was he was given he was given the game exposure like so. It was a positive thing, like. Yeah. And then, did, like everyone tried to turn it into a negative team. Like, so. uh, there's just some some people out there are just will just look for the negative and everything. Like, mm. yeah, it's, uh, it's strange. It's strange. Um, right, we'll do a quick fire round here. Right. Best GA moment. Oh. Scott the goal against Galway in the 16th of the the goal or the whole event? Or the goal. Just the goal? Just the goal. Any reason why? The goal. <laughs> that's fair enough. Can I argue with that? That's about, that's about it, yeah. That's just the, just the way that the game, the game kind of panned out and then kind of a score like that then to win it was like, well, you know, maybe a pint or maybe two. It's all kind of comes out with kind of, so that's what gives confidence that you find. Yeah. Worst GA moment? You can do something to cover the year after. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, best score you ever taken? Four against Gavin. That's future in the last year. And not against Gavin. Best drinking session after a while? Under 21, all our important final, 2010. Uh, uh, the match was on a Saturday. So when we got Saturday after night, it was on a tourist to play Galway again, actually. Uh-huh. And I, I think we won by 26 points or something. And we were down to Torres that night. Um, we went back to a pub then. We didn't go home. We didn't sleep. And then we went out all day Sunday. And then Paulie Mayer then. Seth Paulie Mayer, Brenda Mayer, uh-huh. Michael Cab, a few and a few more. Went to Limerick on Monday. Came back. Went to Kilkenny on Tuesday. And then went to Carmel then on Wednesday. So, that was a real session. Oh, it was crazy, and I was only I was only after turning eighteen at the time, and um, the mother was ringing me. Going, Are you okay? <laughs> all this sort of stuff. But, uh, that was that was one of the best. Yeah. Um, tough sponge, Mark. More Connors. Last two. Where does the name bubbles come from? <laughs> um. The mother, the mother gave it to me after she gave birth to me. I came out and um, had a big hairy back and hairy arms and legs and a big head of hair and all that. She said he looks like Michael Jackson's monkey. <laughs> and that stuck since? That uh, stuck since, yeah. I think I, she, she tried to put it on my birth but I don't think it was allowed. 
How do you feel about that now? You, you're, you're oh, well, like, like the last couple of years, like I've been, I've been getting asked about it a lot. Like, and all, it kind of all depends on where you are. Like, some people ask me, and like, I kind of say, "Well, oh, support West Ham," and they have the song over the long bubbles, or um, so I used to blow bubble bats, or bubbles yeah. in the back, and all this sort of stuff. We make up a lot of stuff, but I eventually come out and just tell them the truth because like, nearly everyone knows nowadays. Yeah. Um, so last thing, best advice for any young players out there, or any kind of traits that you think are, are important for young players to have, people in general? Um, I, I suppose after the last maybe year, I'd say what I change is just kind of have a positive outlook on everything. Kind of, like after having such a bad year, say last year or whatever, and then just come back and try and be positive and kind of taking setbacks and kind of on, on, on route to it. Like, you know, not, everything's not going to be rosy, like, but I think like, Noel McGraw always says it when he gives a speech to young guys, like listen to your coaches and listen to your parents and your management, whatever. But I think, I think one of the, one of the biggest advice I give is res- respect the people that train in your club yeah. because it's a tenuous job, like, mm-hmm. especially when they're going around. I mean, you train train ten year olds, twelve year olds, or fourteen year olds. As the years get up, as the years go, they're getting older and older and getting better and better. Like, like they're the lads that are going to tell you to be successful. Like, don't just listen to them and anything they ask you to do is probably they're, they're doing it they're doing it to try and make you better and to get out here it's not to yeah. get out here like it's to, it's to make you better and just listen to them and then just never take their foot off the pedal yeah. if, if you think they're good uh-huh. you can think you can get better yeah and do you think you know if you're kind of at like the top or probably the goal of where you want to be when you're younger what do you think is kind of brought you to that point and is there is there anything in particular or any attitude you think you've had or? Well, the attitude I've had is that I always thought I was good enough, yeah. and t- like, and I still have, I still have the attitude that it's I, I, I'm good enough and that I'm, that I'm the best out there or whatever, and that's probably why a lot of inter county holders are successful because they think that they're the best. Yeah. When you go out, if I go out and Mark, say Paul Murphy, like, I think I'm better than him. He thinks I'm, that he's better than me. Yeah. So as long as you have that own self belief. I think that's kind of the most important thing. Like you, when you back it up, when yeah, you, like you, you play, but you play bad, you play good. But like you, you just have a bad game doesn't mean you're a bad player. You know, and, and stuff like that. Like people kind of get on top of you and try to get you down. You just kind of have to reset yourself and be like, have that self belief that you're good enough because you won't be there in the first place. Before. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It was a good conversation. Um, that's brilliant. Thanks for taking time out. No bother at all. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you. That's great, hey? How long was it? 47 minutes. Is that too bad? That was good. That's kind of a good amount. Mm. Um, or a good time. The last couple ones have done looking at that uh, amount. And it means people can listen to it when they're going to to yeah. um, people say they fall off that wagon with it. I think it was good, though. Yeah, no, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. No, it was good, yeah. Um,